Hey, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Yeah, the topic of revoking certificates came up at work again today, and I was really happy with this video here, revoking certificates with PowerShell and the PSPKI module, but I want to do a video about revoking certificates with the native DOS cert util command. And I actually spent some time wrestling with the not before and not after restriction in the view verb of cert util. So let's take a look. Okay, so you might be familiar with this lab scenario from my previous videos. Basically, I've built a very abbreviated environment. I have a domain controller and I have an enterprise root CA. I'm not going to deploy OCSP. I just wanted to get the bare minimum up. You can look under about on my YouTube channel. If you're a subscriber, I'm happy to share these or any of the scripts for the PKI videos. So drop me an email. Okay, so I've already built out the lab. Here's my domain controller. Let's talk about group policy when it comes to auto-enroll certificates. We're just going to go ahead and look at that right now. So I, at the very top of my group policy, I'm just going to edit default domain policy. You may want to edit it somewhere closer to the users or the computers. So here I'm just going into Windows settings, security settings, public key policies, certificate services, client auto enrollment, and this is for the machine. You want to make sure it's enabled, check these two boxes. Now under the user configuration, same path, Windows settings, security settings, public key policies, certificate services, client auto enrollment, enabled, check the first two boxes. You don't want to check this last box because that's going to get up in the user's face if something uh, it goes awry with certificates and it just might not be necessary. Oh no, my certificate's going to expire. They're going to get their certificate automatically if you've configured all of this correctly. So that's the group policy piece. Let's look at the certificate services side of things. You can see I've got a good healthy environment here. So here's my CA. We're going to look at certificate templates. First of all, I copied the base computer certificate. I created a copy called AA Co Computer. And let's look at some of the basics here. I didn't change anything here. I set security so that domain computers can read, enroll, and auto-enroll. And then I just looked at the subject name. The default was fully distinguished name. You could use DNS name. What you want to do is make sure you don't select attributes in here that aren't available. We'll see that when we look at the user certificate. So I'm going to cancel out of that. So let's look at the AA Co user certificate. Again here, I didn't change any of the defaults. By default, it publishes an active directory. Security, I set domain users, read, enroll, auto enroll. And the subject name, this is where it's tricky. In this environment, I don't have Exchange configured, so I don't have an email address on aaco.user, my test user in this uh, environment. So. We'll just build from the fully distinguished name, that was the default, and we'll use the user's UPN, their user principal name. If you selected something that isn't available on that user attribute, your certificate is not going to issue. Your request to, for that certificate is going to fail. So you have to make sure if you're going to build from information in Active Directory, that information has to be available or the auto enrollment will fail. Key point. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of that. So those certificates, and then I've gone ahead and published those certificates by saying new publish certificate and selecting. You can't select them because they're already published. AA Co user and AA Co computer. So now I've launched this Windows 10 workstation. I've logged in as, let's see, who am I? I've logged in as AA Co, AA Co user. So I'm just a regular user. Let's go look in Active Directory really quick. So here's our user objects. There's AA Co user. Here's our computer objects. There's uh, the certificate server, and there's my Win 10 workstation. That's really the extent of what I've deployed in Active Directory. So I've logged in as this AA Co user. I've run GP update several times, and I went in and actually every time it gave me a certificate, I deleted it. I did that 
twice and then I updated group policy three times. So if you look in ICA1, the certificate server, you can see Win10 Workstation has three certificates issued and AACO user has three certificates issued. Okay, but here we can see I've only left the last one that uh, I received. So a co user and win 10 a each have their auto enroll certificate. Let's just take a look here. You can see certificate template is a co computer and under the user side certificate template is a co user. So the auto enroll thing works quite well. And now we want to use cert util to list and revoke these certificates because let's say a, a co user is a bad guy and we don't want him having certificates so that he can't connect up to the VPN for example. Now one of the things when you're revoking certificates I would caution that say if you had a developer or an application manager if they requested a certificate for say their web application or to sign their code you might not want to revoke that because then suddenly even though they've left now their web server doesn't work or their code won't run. So you have to be careful and in this case I'm going to show you we can issue a bare request cert util view well let's just go we're just going to go like this let's take it real steady here we're going to start out with the basics I'm just going to go cert util view got to use the config option so the config option is going to be so it's always server name, then CA name, which is AACO-CA. So it's going to list every certificate that's been issued, and you're seeing all of the properties of every certificate. So if you had tens of thousands of certificates issued, you could come in here and view it by filtering it. Add the filter, and we're going to look at requester name. And we're going to go aaco backslash win 10 a dollar sign remember computers have a dollar sign at the end of their sam account name okay so there's that let's go ahead and filter for a, -A co slash a, -A co user so we're going to remove this we're going to add the requester name again you could use certainly other filters here but this is the one that's going to help me find the user and computer certificates that i want to revoke so, okay so that's one way to do it but we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the command line we want to use cert util so this would give me all of the certificates requested by a co user that are still valid certificates because i'm looking for a not after meaning the certificate expires after now let's come back to this because this is what i spent a lot of time on this morning i tried every possible combination of here this one the restriction I wanted not after I wanted the certificate template and I wanted the requester name and it just kept coming back over and over again with an error until I put the not after at the front of this restrict parameter see you're creating this comma separated hash essentially so cert util view restrict to everything that fits in these parameters a certificate that's not expired requested by a co user in the certificate template blah blah and so i had not after in the middle and it wouldn't work you know so i take not after out and requester name and user certificate work just fine i'd put not after back in it wouldn't work and there's no obvious it doesn't say put it in the beginning so it took me a while to figure that out and that was really my prime reason to make this video is I actually spent time on Bing searching multiple times multiple different search phrases about cert util view restrict parameters and nobody came out and said you got to put this in the front so I'm just saving you hours and hours and hours of banging your head on the desk I actually to be honest that's why I went with this PowerShell and PSPKI module originally is because I could not solve this not after insert util. So <laughs> that explains why I did the PowerShell video first. Another time saving tip for you, I'm going to go ahead and share the link for this article down below. It's basically assigning roles within PKI. The minimum access that you need to revoke a certificate is you have to be granted issue and manage certificates on the permissions of the CA. 
So let's take a look at that real quick. That's done in the CA, the Certificate Authority Console. And you're clicking on the properties of the CA, security, and then you're going to add your user or group to grant that permission. So let's let's just add it to AA Co user. Of course, you better to assign rights to groups. We're just using this as an example. So we're going to add AA Co user, and we're going to give him manage and issue certificates, and he would be able to revoke certificates with that. So that's the minimum permissions required to be able to revoke certificates issue and manage certificates granted on the properties of the CA. So you'd have to do it on each CA if you have multiple CAs. Like I say, so let's break this down. So this cert util, the verb is view. We can restrict by the parameters that are enclosed in these quotes and separated with commas. Now the config specifies the server and the CA that you want to speak to. And then you can control the output and here we want to see these key things about a user certificate. We want the serial number, the status code, meaning was it successfully issued, the not after, meaning is it expired or not, the certificate template, meaning is it a web server, is it code signing, is it the AA Co user certificate, when was it revoked, UPN and email. And I know we said our user doesn't have email, but I just copied this from my script at work. So we're going to run this one first. Let's see how that goes. I'm just going to clear this out. And let's drop that in there. So this is every certificate. You see it returned three rows. It's every certificate issued to a, a co user. Okay. And we can see the request code operation completed successfully. The certificate is not expired. Here's the template and it's a, a co user and we want to revoke that so he can't use the VPN it hasn't been revoked and we know it's him and he didn't have an email address so I'm gonna go ahead and run this one where we've actually specified the certificate template and again that's just that long string you see this long GUID here that was returned and I copied and pasted that in to the restrict parameters so it's certificate template and you notice I left the quotes out you just have a closing quote to enclose all of these parameters in the restrict hash essentially so let's see this is just going to show me the aim the AA co user certificates issued to AA co user there we go and we basically get the same results and we knew that but this filters down to explicitly I'm getting the AA co user ones so now let's talk about revoking. Now revoking is going to use this same configuration. You want to use, you're going to say cert util config revoke, and then you're going to revoke the serial number. Now you can have multiple serial numbers separated by a comma. So we're going to test that theory. And then I've also said you can include a reason code if desired. If you do not include a reason code, that single digit number at the end, then it's going to default to unspecified. But you could choose some of these other. I'm going to go with reason code three. So we're going to do multiples and we're going to go with reason code three. So I'm going to drop that in there. Let's go get his certificates. Bear with me. I'm just going to grab all this like that. I normally wouldn't do anything this flaky, but you know I'm having fun and I hope you're having fun too. Let's see. So we want everything from here to here. And I'm just going to take that out, put a comma in, take that out, go to the end here, put another comma in there. Let's get this last serial number. There we go delete. Oh, I left that quote in there somehow. Okay, so that's going to be my three certificates that I want to revoke. So I'm going to grab those and bring those back into the sample here. And again, we've used the revocation code three because he's changed affiliation. And so now we're going to do the revocation of those three certificates. Again, I'll clear the screen here. 
Okay. Mission accomplished. Let's go do the same thing for the Windows 10A workstation. We're going to go back here. We're going to go ahead and get these certificates. We've already know what the certificate template is. I worked that out previously, so. Okay. So you can see issued to Win 10A. There's that certificate template number and is a ACO computer. There's no web server or code signing or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these serial numbers and we'll just repeat that same process here. And comma there. You gotta love working on computers, right? Okay, so there's my list of certificate serial numbers to revoke. And the command's the same when you're revoking certificates. All it cares about is the serial number. It doesn't care if it's a user, if it's a computer, what the template is. You're just getting the serial number and saying revoke this certificate. So here we go. Okay. So we've revoked those certificates. Let's go back and look and see that they are indeed revoked. We're going to go back and look at the revoked certificates in the GUI. So here we go. Yeah, you can see the three user and three computer certificates are indeed revoked. Change of affiliation. We can see the reason. We can see the revocation date. Let's go ahead and we'll use the uh, command line to look at these certificates again. So we're going to use this same command that we used in the beginning, cert util view restrict config and out, and view the revocations in the command line here. Okay, you can see revocation date, revocation date, and last but not least, revocation date. Okay, we're going to go ahead and check the machine certificates are revoked. It's always good to check your work. Okay, so again here you can see revocation date for the Win 10 uh, certificate, revocation date date, Win 10 A certificate, revocation date, Win 10 certificate. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that. Shoot me an email if you're a subscriber. I'll send you the code for the lab and for this uh, certificate revocation. You can check out my Active Directory Certificate Services PKI playlist over here. You can hit this button to subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below. Make sure to like. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.